that we will be implementing. First, we will add some directives, the namespaces. Then we are going to declare some global variables. Next, we are going to write functions, write our own functions, which will be used to connect to a database. Then we are going to uh, code the functions and buttons and behind the buttons used to save data to the database. Uh, then we are also going to write our own functions and code behind the buttons to uh, use to read data from the database to the picture box. And next we are going to add a function or uh, that is add code to a button, the delete button to delete data from the database. Now we'll go to the code and add the functionality. Okay, we'll start off by first making sure that we have our directive, our namespace added, and we decided to use OLEDB. Therefore, we are going to include, that is, we're going to use OLEDB namespace. So make sure you add this line of code that is using system.data.oledb. Uh, next, we also need another namespace to be included, and that is system.io. This is needed. This is necessary if you want to save or read images from an, uh, a database file, for example, from MS Access database, because you need to convert the image. If you want to store it to a database, you need to convert it from uh, your type of image to a type that is supported by the database. And similarly, you have to do the reverse if you want to read an image from the database. Now, once you have your directive uh, directives already, we are going to move to the global declarations, that is global variables we're going to use throughout our application. Now, if you remember, I said that OLEDB is actually made up of a set of classes or agents that work together uh, and let us establish a connection and read write data. Now, the first one that you need is OLEDB connection object. The class is OLEDB connection, and as you know, it represents an open connection to the data source. Uh, so I declare an object called DB connection, and this is how you declare it without any values to it. This, so this has no values, but it is declared for now. Next, we also create a data adapter. Uh, as we discussed earlier, to get values from our access table, this is a sort of proxy that you really need, uh, and this is necessary. So this is the simple declaration syntax, and I call my uh, object simply data adapter. You could set it to my data adapter if you want to, uh, you know, avoid confusions. Then we declare when then we create a local data table to hold the values of access table as we discussed. So we'll call it local data table. And we initialize it without giving any values to it as well. Okay, next we have uh, two index trackers, both of type integer. Uh, one is called a row position and the other is called row number. Both are set to zero. Now, what is the dif difference between them? Uh, row position is used as a tracker for storing data to database at a last or new location, while row number will be used for navigation when reading data from the database. Now, why do we need two trackers uh, when we are reading or writing data to the same database file or table? Uh, the simple reason is that row position is going to be fixed at the new location. For example, whatever the number of records is, if it's nine, this location is going to point to the new location, which is going to be 10 at all times, because simultaneously, I could also be navigating the uh, records from the database. And maybe at any time I want to store a new record to um, uh, I want to store a new record in the database. So I need a pointer fix out the position to tell me which is a new position. So I, for my logic or for my code, that is row position, at a separate tracker or a pointer to the last or new location. Right, so a global variables are ready and now we should use them. And the first things we are going to do is make functions, our, our own defined function that is going to allow us to connect to a database, simple connection that is going to um, open a connection or close a connection and refresh a connection. So the first function I made is connect to database. Now this function uh, is supposed to open a new connection to the database file to a specified database file that I want to edit or I want to read data from. Uh, and the code is something like this. Remember the db connection object we declared, we are going to finally 
tell it what is the provider that you can use to access the database file and the exact file and the location of the file that you need to access. So it goes something like this. Data DB connection dot connection string. This is the connection string property of the uh, DB connection object we are setting and which is set to provider is equal to microsoft.jet.oledb.4.0. Now, if you remember, this is the exact one we decided in the concept. And then the data source is that your database file. Now, remember to give the proper path of your database file and the extension of your database file with definitely the exact name of the file that you're trying to access. Now, I stored my uh, database file called mydb.mdb in the debug folder of this project. So I don't need to give a whole path uh, of the direct or the whole directory where it is stored. As you can see right here, this is the file. Okay. So if you want to, uh, if you want to remove the dependency of the path of your MS Access database file, you could follow my method and you could simply put your database file in the debug folder of your project. Okay. Now, when we have told the connection object, uh, the provider and the source, we are going to ask it to open the connection and that the call is something like this, dbconnection.open. Now, this is simply going to open the connection between the uh, the database and your c -sharp application. Then we are also going to tell the data adapter what to get from which table in our MS Access database file. And then this is where the data adapter comes in. Now, this uh, object of the OLEDB data adapter called data adapter over here is initialized to a new value where we have sent a string, which is actually a SQL query to select staring that is to select all from images table uh, over the DB connection. That is the connection we have established that we have opened so far. Now there are two things to it. Uh, one is the connection over which uh, the query is going to execute and the other is a query. Now uh, the thing worth noting is the exact name of the access table from which you want to retrieve data or, you know, to modify it or view it. So at, that, at this point, I think it's important to show you what my database looks like, the design and the names and everything. As you can see, this is my database file called MyDB. And this is the table that I'm going to use to retrieve my data or store my data. Uh, and it's called images table, as you can see right here, the same name has been used. Then uh, we'll go to the design view and I'll tell you the fields that I've set. Now it simply has three fields. One is the image ID kept as the primary key and this is a text. The data type is text. The other is image name and this is also text. And then there is an image field, the column called image. And this is an OLE object because images are stored as OLE object in MS Access database. So make sure you set it to OLE object. Now I told you because uh, this sequence, that is this sequence of columns is exact going to be used when we are trying to read or write, especially when we are trying to write data to a new record in our MS Access database file. So first comes the image ID in my database, then comes image name, and then comes the image column uh, or field. So if you shift them, if you, you know, uh, change the sequence, so make sure you change the sequence in, in your code as well, according to whatever database, whatever table you are using for your project. Right. Next, we ask the data, adapt, a data adapter to fill our local data table that we created and fill it with all the values that are stored if there, there is any value stored in the MS Access database table we just saw and uh, that is going to be shifted to local data table. Uh, as you can see, these values in the same sequence are going to be stored locally in local data table. The fill function of data adapter does that for us. Okay, next we are going to set row position to the number of rows in our data table because as I said, row position is used for adding a new record to the database. So we need to fix it to the last location. 
and this is the code uh, that we say if local data table dot rows dot count is not equal to zero that there that is there is some rows existing in our table then row position is equal to local data table dot rows dot count which is going to be i think um, one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten so row position is going to be ten we only need to increment it by one and we can add our new record here at 11. And when we have our function ready, uh, we also definitely we, may, we need this function to be able to connect to the database. Uh, and where should it be called? Well, according to me, when your form loads, uh, that is the proper time or a perfect time to connect to your database as well. So you can do that by going to your form and double clicking on your form which will take you to the form load event. And besides uh, loading your form, you, uh, your application should connect to the database. So we are going to call this function our connect to database right here. 